Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Windows 7 into your Mac OS X using VirtualBox. And so this is going to be a little bit different than a previous video that I have in that I will be using a downloaded Windows 7 ISO, specifically a 32-bit. And so I'm at this website here where you can download pretty much any of the ISOs in multiple languages if you choose. And so they have pretty much every version of Windows 7 here but particularly I'm going to be using the Windows 7 Professional 32-bit version in English so I'll go ahead and click that it's gonna take a while because it's 2.3 gigs for me it's gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes but for you it may take hours alright and so uh, the reason why I'm going with this is because it requires less resources to be allocated and also because I have a serial key for a Windows 7 32-bit right so next we're going to download and install the VirtualBox program so I'm on the website here so VirtualBox for Mac OS X host I'll click on that and it's gonna allow me to download and then we're going to install the VirtualBox extension packs and that's available for all platforms you don't have to choose which platform you want for that all right so once you get those downloaded we can go ahead and move on and install our virtual box so we'll double click on the image here the DMG and then we'll double click on the package file we'll click continue continue again click install then we will authenticate and install and if you ever get errors saying that it failed to install well, what you can do is run disk utility right and uh, do a repair permissions on your hard drive so this is my main hard drive here Maxilla that's my main hard drive and click on repair permissions it's gonna take a few minutes and uh, after that you will restart your computer and then you can try again to install VirtualBox and you'll get this completed successfully window and we'll go ahead and click close and you can close that out and uh, now we can go ahead and run VirtualBox and once we run VirtualBox we can then install our extension pack here so we have that running we'll double click on the extension pack we'll click on install we have to scroll down the terms of service click on I agree authenticate one more time and then VirtualBox extension pack was installed. The only thing that we're really going to use in this uh, extension pack is the uh, USB 2.0 drivers for that. All right. And uh, now that we have everything squared away in terms of installation, we've downloaded our ISO here. We're going to go ahead and create a new virtual machine. So click on new, click on continue, and I'll type in Windows 7, or you could say Windows 7 32-bit if you're going to plan on having multiple Windows installed and uh, in terms of uh, allocating RAM the minimum that you're gonna want to do is one gig of RAM and I recommend using at least two gigs and uh, if you have four gigs of physical memory in your machine two gigs is good and if you have eight gigs two gigs is good um, since we're using a 32-bit operating system 32-bit Windows you're not gonna really need more than three or you can't really uh, use more than three anyway so don't allocate more than three gigs for the 32-bit version um, I have eight here and I could use four but I honestly I'm not gonna use that much if you only have four gigs of RAM allocate two if you only have two gigs of RAM well you're only left with uh, allocating one gig to your virtual machine and the experience not going to be so great it may be a little slow you won't be able to have a whole lot of programs open so you might have one program in Windows one program in Mac um, that will run and that's just about enough so uh, just keep in mind that right so I'm gonna go ahead and allocate two gigs for mine click on continue I'm gonna create a new hard disk and it's gonna be a virtual box and disk image they have other file formats virtual machine formats here for other virtual machine software 
that you could choose so that it'll be compatible with other software if you choose to get it. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at VirtualBox Disk Image because that's the only program I'm going to really use. And then I'm going to have it dynamically allocated so that means the more data I write to it, the more I fill up, the bigger it gets versus a fixed size where it takes a chunk out of my hard drive, whatever, 25 gigs if I say, and that's it. The big file is 25 gigs. Even though I haven't filled 25 gigs worth of data in my virtual drive, on my physically, the file that it creates, that VDI file, will be 25 gigs if I had a fixed size there. All right, so click on continue, and then Windows 7 is going to be the name of my virtual machine. I'm allocating 25 gigs to it. Click on continue, and basically, this is telling me where my virtual machine is right now, or my virtual machine file. That's where it is. And then I'll click on con uh, create. And now we have our virtual machine, but we're going to do a little bit of tweaking first. So we have it highlighted here, and we'll click on settings. And we'll just go through little by little what we want to do here. All of this we can leave alone. Um, we can click on system, and we're going to uncheck floppy because we don't really have a floppy. First boot device will be the CD ROM drive, and then the processor. Since I have a Core i5, there's physically four processors and virtually four more. But I'm not going to really use anything so intensive, so I'll just leave it at one CPU, which is good enough. It's like a 2.5 gigahertz processor. You could leave it at two, but I'll just say one processor. And I could say how much do, you, do I want to allow that one processor to work at allow this virtual machine to use up 90% of the processor, use 50% of the processor so it doesn't run it too hard. I'll go ahead and say 100%. And then acceleration, this is a hardware virtualization, you can leave that unchecked. All right, and so for the video memory, once I enable 3D and 2D acceleration, I can go ahead and bump this up all the way to 256. And that's pretty much it for that. All right, so here we are at a very important stage where we're going to tell this virtual machine to load the ISO as our installation disk, right? So here I have the IDE controller. That's my DVD, virtual DVD drive. And in this virtual DVD drive, there's nothing in it. There's no physical disk and there's no ISO file loaded up. So once I click on that, I'll go ahead and click on this little disk right here. Right, and I'm going to choose a virtual file. So I'll click on this ISO. This is what I downloaded. This is Windows 7 right here, professional, 32-bit. And I click on open. And pretty much it now has the ISO or the disk loaded up. And so when I start my computer or when I start my virtual machine, it will load up. The first thing is to load the CD, DVD drive, whatever's in it. And this is the disk that it's going to load up this ISO here right so now that we got that we can move on and we can leave pretty much all of this alone it's all the same USB 2.0 is going to be enabled right and then we'll click on OK now we're ready to actually start our virtual machine so go ahead and click on start so it's now loading up just like a normal computer it's loading up the ISO right now and it's going to start the Windows installation process. All right, so we're at the first screen here, and we're going to click on Next, Install Now, and then we're going to click on Accept the License Terms, click on Next, and then we want to click on Custom, and we'll highlight our 25 gig virtual drive here, click on Drive Options, click on New, and Apply, OK. It's going to create two partitions here, one system reserve, and one just nothing, no name. We want to install on the larger one, disk zero partition two, right? So click on next. And now this installation is going to take a little while, probably about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. And we'll come back when this is done and we should have a completed Windows 7 installation.
So we're almost finished with our installation. We just have to enter in a username here, anything you like, whatever you prefer. Password, you don't necessarily have to. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Product key, I'm going to enter in that later. And uh, we'll just click on next. Use recommended settings for updates. And then we'll click on next. And the network that I'm on, yeah, I'll just call it a work network. Alright, so we made it to the desktop. The installation was successful. And now what we're going to run is something called guest additions. Right? So what this is doing is that the virtual box, the program, is going to install special drivers and other pieces of software, whatever it is that they do, into our virtual machine here. So this virtual machine, this Windows 7, has to be running in order for you to install the guest editions. Right? So we'll go to devices here, click on install guest editions, and it's going to load up something almost like it would put something in the disk drive of our computer here and if auto run isn't on and it doesn't come up then what you'll have to do is go to computer and you'll see here in our virtualized optical disk oh there it is so it, it took a little bit but it started up All right so we can click on on run virtual box guest editions if we want or we can just go ahead and double click on it and that does the auto run as well and it's going to go ahead and start this insulation process right down here click on next and it wants to install the files in this location here that's fine direct 3d support I haven't been able to get that to work on account of I think the integrated graphics on my MacBook Pro uh, just isn't up to par to support this if you have discrete graphics in your MacBook like the 15 inch MacBook Pros they have the AMD and Nvidia hardware in there this would probably work better but I'm gonna leave it unchecked I'm gonna click on install you know it's installing some software and drivers I'm gonna go ahead and click on install and allow this to happen and uh, by doing this what it allows you to do is run your virtual machine in full screen mode and a couple of other modes that's very kind of handy sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and if we go to the the um, instructions here the user manual here's where you can pretty much find out about some of the features that guest edition does like seamless windows where the windows that you have will blend in side of your mac os x which is kind of a neat feature so again sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but for the most part what a lot of people ask me is uh, how to just get this full screen or when they hit full screen that it uh... the window goes full screen but Windows itself is actually a tiny little screen with black bars all around it and they don't want that. Right, so the system just rebooted and if you notice here the window is a little bit bigger. I mean it's, I can't even see my the toolbar down here. And uh, it seems like it's already set to scale mode. And essentially what that is is that however big your window, you make the size of the window, it will adjust windows. Right, to fit the full size of your window here so um, under view this is where you can choose to switch to seamless mode or scale mode or go to full screen right now it's on auto resize guest display and so what I could do is switch to scale mode All right so I'll just click on switch so this is pretty much scale mode here right and then I could do post C and that pretty much took me out right so let's see how full screen works so this is full screen looks pretty good actually 
And here down at the bottom, if you put your mouse all the way down at the bottom, you'll have uh, the toolbar here and you can get back out of here. All right, so let's try the seamless mode. So down here is your windows. And so let's say if I were to start paint, here's paint. And as you can see, it's still, I still have my Mac OS X behind here, which is a cool feature if you're into this sort of thing. It would kind of confuse me a little, personally. But we can get out of there, right? Back into our Windows inside a virtual machine. All right, so before I go, one common question that I get is uh, plugging in thumb drives and getting it to recognize in your Windows installation. Essentially, you have your Windows running here, and what you're going to do is plug in your thumb drive, and you may have to unmount it from Mac OS X, so when, when it loads up here, imagine if this was your thumb drive, you basically have to unmount it, right? Uh, but leave it plugged in, and then down at the bottom right here, when you click on this USB icon looking thing down here, you'll see your thumb drive here, and I'm sorry I don't have a thumb drive on me to be showing you this to mount it, but essentially what you'll do is that you'll click on it and hopefully it'll be um, it'll be uh, not grayed out for you. If it is grayed out, I really don't know what to do on that. Um, if you know offhand, leave a comment. But essentially you'll see your thumb drive here and you'll click on it and then it will mount it to your computer and you'll see it as a regular thumb drive inside of my computer here all right so that's uh, how you mount the USB thumb drives all right so I hope that helped you all out uh, please comment rate thumbs up thumbs down subscribe all that jazz and uh, thanks for watching I'll catch you guys later